Hi, I'm Casket Clinket artist Dean Heron, and today we're going to be making an elbow ads. Okay, so you can use different types of steel uh, for your ads blade itself. Uh, most of this, the ads that I've made are from reclaimed car springs, and uh, the steel that's in there actually works really well for, for making them. This particular ad is going to be made out of a skidoo uh, spring and apparently they have um, a really great feel. They're a nice weight to them and uh, when you're using them to start uh, finishing your, your piece, whatever that might be, your mask or your bowl or uh, spoon, uh, these ads blades hold up really well. So what I'm going to do, I have an angle grinder uh, that I'm going to use. It uh, is a, uh, we're going to cut this piece of steel uh, off. I've just marked where the length of my ads is going to be. Uh, and I have safety equipment. So what I'll be using is a dust mask because it's going to be blowing up some steel. I have uh, a pair of safety glasses and I also have a, uh, some ear protection. Uh, the angle grinder can be quite um, loud. And uh, we'll just go from there. So after I, I cut off the piece of steel that I wanted from that snowmobile spring, uh, you put it onto the belt sander and just cleaned off all the paint, uh, any rust that was on it, uh, and it um, cleaned up quite nicely. Uh, another reason for doing that is so that I can actually uh, keep a look, uh, keep an eye out on uh, whether or not uh, it gets too hot and I start burning the steel. Again, you don't want to do that takes the temper out of it and it puts uh, weak parts into the blade so what we'll do now is put it on to the bench grinder here and uh, and you'll draw in a profile of the blade shape that you want uh, this particular one I found in the Burke Museum in Seattle and it's uh, fashioned after a ads that I saw in their collection there so we'll uh, put that ads curve into it. We'll put the, the profile of the blade in first. And then after that, we'll put on the bevel. As well, again, when you're working with these uh, high powered machines, uh, make sure you do have your safety equipment. I have a safety goggle, I've got a dust mask. Uh, my sleeves are rolled up and uh, so that nothing can get into those rotating uh, uh, grinder um, stones. And I also have steel-toed boots. And I've seen people wear their own runners and that kind of thing. And I've seen blades that are dropped go into peat, which is not a great thing to watch. But so it's safety is uh, of the utmost importance. So now that I've put on the profile of my blade here, uh, it's now to put the bevel onto it. And with this uh, particular um, skidoo spring, you can see there's a bit of a, a bow in the actual spring itself. So you want to put the, uh, the bevel on the bow upside. So if it bows this way, you want to put the, the bevel at the end here. And you can see what I've, I've already kind of started it, uh, make it a couple passes. Um, I've drawn on wherever I want the bevel to come back to and I start from this line and I move forward 
and uh, again we're going to be using it on the bench grinder here we're going to be holding it up against our guard here and we're going to be moving up across the face of that grinding stone just like that so it'll take a few moments uh, this will be the bulk of the work and then after that we'll move to uh, using the files All right, so you now you can see now I've uh, started putting the the bevel side of the blade on. It's uh, gone down to a nice thickness that I can actually move to the files. So I'll do a few passes of the files just to get it nice and flat as I can across that bevel where the blade is, and then I'm going to move on to uh, some sharpening stones, just like we did uh, with the diamond stones. You're going to do the same thing uh, with this adds and you want to bring this to a really nice high polish um, nice high polish you'll get a nice clean and sharp adds blade with it. so we'll do that now so just working on this bevel now and uh, what I'll do is just flatten out this uh, edge that we've created here for the blade um, I'll be using a flat file uh, and I'm just gonna be running it across the blade and making sure the plane is at the same level all the way across to make a nice even uh, surface area for uh, the blade itself. And this process won't take too long. We'll use the knife and then we're gonna move to the diamond tools and then we'll sharpen it up with the emery paper. And at that point, we'll just take a look at that point, uh, whether or not we need to temper it or not. So it's good to have two hands with this process and just you're just gonna move it up and down the surface of this blade. Okay, now uh, after we've taken it onto the, the diamond stones, we're going to use some emery paper. I have a WorkSharp uh, sharpener and it is uh, quite a miraculous machine just because I have lots of tools and I need to hone them up from time to time while I'm carving. Uh, it's really good for finishing off the, the blades that we have, uh, whether it's uh, the bent knives that we make or whether it's this uh, adz blade that we're fashioning. You can see I've got it pretty much to a nice shine in the front um, and we're going to use this machine just to finish it off with and then uh, I'm thinking about putting the temper back into it maybe uh, I'll probably just test it out to see how it cuts and I'll go from there um, this machine again it's a high powered machine so make sure your sleeves are rolled up uh, you have your safety goggles on and uh, you should be ready to go So now that we finished our ads blade, uh, we're going to put it onto the handle. There's still a couple of things I'd like to do with this one here, but uh, the next step with uh, finishing it off and getting your blade final finalized is to put it onto a handle. And for handles, um, you can make these, these ads handles, uh, they work really nicely out of alder, maple, like a nice hardwood um, when you're looking at it. And really what you're looking at with making an ads handle uh, just because we don't have time to actually go out into the forest right now and harvest a tree um, this is a handle that I had in the shop already um, it's an elbow ads handle it's about it's about a foot and a half long or so and it's actually um, you see where it was growing out of the tree and you want a inter intersection like this because it makes it really tough you can see right on the the end here where the the branches 
going into the tree itself and you want to cut it off and you'll have a nice V to it. Um, too shallow of a V, uh, it's pretty hard to, it's pretty hard to um, add when it's really shallow, the actual angle there. And if it's a little bit further out, uh, it uh, works quite nice. So what we'll do uh, when you're making your handle, if you're making it out of fresh alder or, or birch or maple, um, you're gonna have to dry the handle out. And the drying process, uh, really you cut it, the tree green, cut it out, take all the bark off it, and then you just wrap it in paper and you keep changing that paper until it's dry. It takes a, it takes a number of days uh, to do. And once you get it to the dry stage, where it's really nice and um, uh, dry and hard, you, um, you can um, start cutting the notch into it. Um, and you'll see that this part here of the blade will, if you, you see where I've cut this notch off, uh, you'll, you'll put the blade into it here. And you just want a nice V to it. And really when it comes to, to using it, you'll see that your hands at the end of the handle, maybe a little bit, a little bit up from it, it makes a really nice um, triangle shape here. Um, so you cut your notch in it. You cut off this extra, you can see this extra piece here. Uh, what, I, what I'll do, I'll just take it to a bandsaw or chisel, hammer, whatever tool that you uh, prefer to use. And then just cut that flush along the top of the uh, ads itself. And that way when you're, when you're cutting, it doesn't actually get caught on anything uh, when you're using it. So we'll do that. Um, what I'm gonna do is you can see this Ads blade goes a little bit wider than the handle itself. I think uh, what I would like to do is just uh, grind those edges down just a little bit more so that it, uh, it sits flush with the ads itself. And then we'll tie it up. And we're gonna tie it up just like we would a knife. And uh, it should be good to go. So I'm really excited to try this, uh, this ads blade out. Got a handle on here, shouldn't take too long to put it on. So that's what we'll do next and just follow along with this. So we've grounded our ads down to width. Um, this way the width is, is not overlapping the notch that we've cut into the bottom of our ads handle here. So you just want to make sure it measures up um, so that it's nice and flush on either side. Okay, And that way when you're using the ads it's not getting caught on the edge here or on the other side. So got a nice um, width to it. You can see where the where the angle is. I cut pretty far into this handle portion but um, because it's coming up against this uh, tree knot here where the branch is, it, uh, it's going to be really quite tough. So I like the angle. I've got it nicely flush on this side now. I've got it on flush on either side. I'm going to go ahead and tape that on and just take a couple of little swings with it. Not into anything, but just with tape, just to kind of get the feel of balance. And a nice balanced adds. Uh, you're gonna feel that it doesn't have too much resistance going up. It doesn't have too much resistance going down. It's it's balanced all the way through the cut. And uh, once I've done that, uh, just to make sure I've got a nice angle on it. And it's just really just adjusting this blade back and forth, um, or maybe the angle on this way. But I think it's looks like it's pretty good but we'll take a few swings and see what it feels like and then after that we'll just tie it up and it should be good to go okay here we are we're back as I said uh, just tape your your blade to the handle that you've made and uh, just kind of take it a few little easy swipes with it if you will just easy chopping with it and what you're looking for here is that it's uh, has a nice balance to it and it's not it's not flinging back and it's not dropping forward, but there's like an even weight to it as you put the cut through it. Uh, why these are called elbow adds is because you're working from your elbow to the blade itself and you're moving it all in one motion. You're not using just your wrist. If you just did that, your wrist would be uh, uh, really sore or you might even do some damage to uh, your ligaments there. So your wrist is, is stiff and you're swinging all the way from the elbow. And 
we found a nice balance with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie it up. And uh, you know, once you've uh, tied it up and get it ready to use, you'll find that it's really quite an elegant tool to use. Uh, quite easy to uh, get off uh, some of the uh, bark or even start shaping some of the projects that you have. And uh, I've seen numerous ones around the world. Um, and this kind of blade, either they're made of uh, um, like Maori's, some of their jade tools, same shape, uh, same uh, construction of handle. And uh, I've seen some over in Norway, in Oslo, at their uh, folk museum, their people museum. And they use them, they use their ads for ship making. And um, you'll see the actual, the whole blades actually is one piece to the handle and it has a small little handle attached to it. But it, um, it's the same shape, it's the same elegant uh, cutting tool and it's very efficient uh, once you kept sharp and, and uh, attached. This will be used for years to come. So we'll attach it on there and I'll show you the end result. So we got uh, some nice string here. Uh, it's a bit thicker than what we would use for the knives. I'm not exactly sure what the size of it is. Um, I'm thinking it's about 26. Again, it's uh, same twine, so it's a waxed um, string. And uh, what we'll do, like we did with knives, we'll uh, make a loop and just tie the knot off. So just a, an easy, an easy knot, just like you would do tying a shoelace. And you'll just pull that through, nice and tight. And that way, when you're when you're um, going to pull the string through um, it will bind nicely and you'll have something to hook it into so you do it that way so again uh, i recommend with your ads just wrap it up with something you can wrap it in tape i just have some old uh, cloth here so i think it's a t-shirt and uh, just wrap off the blade that way you won't cut the string when you're trying to pull it through and uh, it's actually less likely to injure yourself in case that string breaks when you pull it. So you'll pull off about about 10 inches or so on the top side of your your ads and you'll just wrap that around um, for later use. Just like so. And then this little section here is where the string is going to go over. So what you do is uh, on the top side not on the bottom side. If you were to tie it on the bottom here um, you'll put a little bit of a, a bump into it and over time it's just going to wear the string off so it's better just put that string that you're hiding underneath all the wraps on the, the top side and you'll put a little uh, loop on the back side here um, just like so and uh, what I've done here is I've just put up the string against the wall here just so that I can pull it out and, and hold it on the ground with my foot and uh, you'll do that and then the first couple wraps you'll just do by hand you just use your hand just to tie that around get it nice and tight and then once you've done that you can start actually just wrapping the ads itself again you don't need to put it super tight so that it's so tough to put it through um, but you can just wrap it this way Make sure you don't get anything else caught in there. So wrap a little bit and it's, you're keeping it uh, tight with your foot and you're just pulling it through. So here we have it. We've uh, wrapped it all the way back uh, right to the, the, uh, the V in your, in your handle. And that loop that we had is right here. You know, we pass that last strand right through that loop. And that way, when we take this loop off, we can pull it through. And we can use that side of the string to pull it through. And that will pull that end of that string underneath over top of the ends. And I've put another knot just above it. And that way, I can pull it back a little bit. So you pull it through first and then pull it back. And that way it's secure on both sides. You can see we've uh, put that loop just around this screwdriver on the floor here. Um, 
and I can be able to stand on it and then I can just pull this string towards myself I can use both hands and just pull that thing through and you'll see it uh, disappear through this loop right here You can just watch it go through. You don't want to pull it all the way through, but you go about halfway or so. You can see it on this, you can see it moving through here. Okay, so I pulled it about three quarters of the way through. You can see where it ended up. And up just about three quarters the end of the end through about three quarters of the way through and then we'll take the side that we just pulled through with this loop and we'll turn this add plate up and we'll step on that put that loop through screwdriver and pull up and when you're pulling up this way um, pull it up so that the trajectory of your blade's actually gonna go on the side of you. Don't pull it right towards your stomach or anything, just in case it breaks. And you can pull it back. So I pulled it way back through this way, about halfway, and that way it's cinched on both sides. Now you can just cut that off. And your blade, and your ads is ready to go. Ads uh, blade, start to finish, from making your ads to securing it on a handle. This ad blade will uh, be used for years to come.